Hi friends, uh, this is Arun. In this video, we'll have a look at uh, what is uh, big O or what is the, the runtime complexity of an algorithm. Okay, uh, all boils down to the same answer. Okay, uh, first let's see why we need to look at big O. I mean, we are not looking at the book, uh, the missing piece. That's an interesting book. If you want, you can read it. Here we are going to focus on the big O of an algorithm. Let's pick some algorithms and check it out. What is the big O? or how to uh, calculate the big O of your own code. So uh, existing algorithm, somebody would have written in the book and you can go and look at it. But if I write a code and somebody, the interviewer asks like, a, what is the runtime complexity of the of your code? You should be able to answer it. That's the goal of this thing, okay? So let's first uh, look into why we need to do it. Let's assume I am writing an algorithm, okay, to do something. I should know when that will complete. If I, for a given set of inputs, for a, uh, I might have different set of inputs for one set of inputs. I should at least able to predict it so that I'll know that this is slow or fast all those things Okay, so typically uh, we'll start with the brute force solution brute force solution is nothing but your random uh, Hard solution where uh, you go and find out all those things and then uh, solve it Okay, and uh, if you are smart enough You will apply some of the existing data structures and algos and then solve it in a better way Either you learnt it from there or like you thought on your own like that. Okay. So anyhow, you will get a solution. So there, uh, in real world, you will find solution for every problem in the life. Okay. The same goes to uh, programs as well. If you Google it, you will find all the solutions. But so if the solution is efficient or not, determines a lot of other factors when it comes to business. Let's assume you are uh, having a um, mobile phone and uh, in the context you try to sort your context and one mobile uses a bubble sort another mobile uses a merge sort okay Let, let's assume forget about what the sort is so there are two types of sorts okay uh, and uh, we assume that bubble sort takes uh, for 50 elements uh, it takes around 50 milliseconds 50 seconds whereas merge sort takes uh, for 50 elements it takes around 5 seconds which one you will prefer obviously a straightforward question you will go for merge sort Let's assume if it uh, the same uh, goes for a larger context. So if it becomes 500 uh, or like let's say uh, take around uh, uh, 250 contacts. For 250 contacts, if the same bubble sort takes uh, for around 5 minutes, how frustrating it would be for every time sorting and searching something in your mobile. For if you click it and you will, if you wait for around uh, five, uh, five minutes, five seconds or sorry, five minutes to get some uh, data, how irritating and uh, how painful it would be for you. So that's the reason why we, sh we are focusing on uh, any runtime or a uh, big O of an, of an algorithm so that we'll predict it is better or not. We are not doubting the output. We are only doubting the time complexity, not even doubting. We are trying to understand the time complexity of a program. Okay. Sometimes there are some programs. Uh, if you give more input, that's it. Your program will be dead slow. Okay. So let's uh, take an example of how to calculate a um, time complexity for any statement uh, is the in a program is order of one. Okay. If you have one statement in your code, it's order of one. It doesn't matter what code it is. Okay, it could be addition, subtraction, or a print or scan. Okay, so your order is your order of your program is one. Every statement you can count for one. If you have five lines, your program is order of five. Like that, you can calculate, or you can. Ca I mean, uh, we'll find uh, come out with the averaging little later. But as of now, assume that your uh, if you have five lines, it's order of five. Okay, so let's go into a little complex. I have one for loop which is running it for five times. So what would be the order? It's order of five. If the for loop is for 10 times, the order is for 10. If the for loop is for uh, 15 or n, the order is for n. Okay, like that it is. So now we understood what is order of n. I hope it's clear. Okay, so uh, the for loop runs for n times. So the statement executes for, even though the statement is 1, but it got executes for around n times. So we are giving it as order of n. Okay, and the same way here, uh, we have a little modified uh, for loop where uh, instead of incrementing one by one, we are incrementing double. Even there also, it's the same thing. Okay, so now let's go to a little complex for loop where uh, I have a nested for loop, one outer and one inner. And uh, how it will be, it will be n cross n, which is n square actually. Okay, so the inner for loop will run for n times, the outer for loop will run for n times. So n into n, it will be running for n square times. 
okay so that is a uh, growth rate if you have any two for loops in any program you you can blindly claim that it is n square okay it could be less than that but worst case is n square okay where it is less than we'll look into a little later so for example if it is a if the inner for loop uh, cuts itself by half every time so that's called logarithmic thing okay so this is the one it is so i have while loop in the while loop if you see the n it is not n is not uh, decrementing by one it is decrementing by half here the same way uh, the multiplication factor is by two so the number of statements is getting executed it decreases by half okay these things are called logarithmic log of n okay so you might have studied log in the school days right the same thing here so if it is for three loops then same extrapolation n cube okay always remember if you have three loops in your program your logic is somewhere messed up until unless you are using a three dimensional array okay so let's go to the big o notation so i have a statement here like example 10 cube 10 n cube 4 n square so what it means is like i have 10 uh, for loops uh, 10 3 uh, 3 for loops and then 4 2 for loops and 4 1 for loop and then uh, 5 statements okay this is my uh, program looks like okay for every line you can write it right equally so in this my order of n is n cube so n cube is nothing but who's the worst case we always uh, remove the constants okay so if you eliminate the constant so the guy is like n cube plus n square plus n whose n cube is the biggest guy we'll put it okay so some more example for n plus n uh, 7 n plus n it is order of n here it is order of n cube because that is the biggest case same problem as the one which you get here the order is log n the last one okay so let's see the severity of the complexity uh, or uh, big o of n constant of one is always best then uh, log of n is the next best n and then n log n n square is the it's getting worst okay n cube is worst and the biggest culprit is 2 power n if your program is having some way of going into 2 power n then you can clearly uh, say that your program is something clearly wrong mostly you should avoid such codes like n cube or n 2 power n it is always better to avoid okay so we'll see some examples associated with this number so that you can also go back and uh, understand that little better okay so when it is uh, 2 power n uh, we'll uh, also in the future slide we'll see how much time it is takes for uh, 100 inputs or 1000 inputs okay so this is the thing uh, for example if you are uh, accessing an element in the array using an index it's order of one that's why people prefer array and hash map there is an option so then comes the log of n which is a binary search binary searches you divide the array into two halves and then search in that and then again two half and search it again two half and search it like that and then the linear search which is of order of n where you have to search all the elements in an array and uh, similarly heap sort bubble sort is the n square thing so that's why people don't prefer bubble sort but it is easy to understand okay uh, so to start with understanding you use it but after that you stop uh, go for other sorting algorithms like quick or merge or heap or now tim sort is the best which is available in the thing okay here is the chart which i was mentioning see for example if you see the order of n for around 1024 okay so log of n uh, runs for only 10 times let's say it's 10 one uh, second it is okay so it takes 10 seconds whereas uh, 2 power n takes for 10 power 500 308 times 8 seconds 2 uh, 10 power okay that was it is okay and this chart i took it from net uh, probably you can also find it and then uh, uh, take a printout and keep it in your thing so this is all the time complexity and of uh, different uh, data structures in uh, available famous data structure okay and the question now comes the question so find the order of n for this scenario okay what is the average case for big o of linear search in an array of n items already we have seen the answer thank you bye bye